Hi everyone, welcome back into the classroom. I'm gonna start a series here what I'm gonna be calling brush ups. What that is is uh, smaller paintings done very quickly that are gonna to touch in, uh, on some of the techniques that we've done here on the channel in the last couple of years so that you can bring them back, refresh your memory, and get a little bit of practice in. Uh, one of my uh, students that are on our group, on our MeWe group, she started posting this uh, set of, of paintings of the 30 Days of Roses, and during her lunch hour, she paints a little painting every day during the lunch hour at work, and her roses have gone have improved so much they're so pretty and uh, it's just by that repetition of doing one little painting you know every day so I thought God that's such a great idea let's do that and let's brush up on some things so today and I'm gonna do it uh, today on a smaller little one I love these little boards you know here at the we're a professional studio and gallery and so we do a lot of framing we do a lot of you know a lot of boards and stuff we get a lot of un end cut boards this is a little 8x10 board uh, MDF board I have them in MDF you know like this one I, th I was doing this one last night I this is something that I do all the time. I practice like this, this little painting like this at the end of my painting day to use up my palette. Um, but they make wonderful little, uh, you know, little gifts and stuff. And then we take the end cuts of some of our frames and we put those up and, and, uh, and sell those as well. So here's one that's getting ready to, uh, you know, to go in and, and they're, they're great. They're fun uh, little paintings. This is a, a, an MDF, I mean, a, a, a tempered masonite board. A little 8x10. You can get, uh, you know, pretty reasonably little 8x10 frames everywhere. These make wonderful gifts, and we're coming into the gift-giving season and stuff, and great ways to practice colors, practice techniques. So I did this little rose last night after I had worked on this big portrait, and... Um, it just works out really well. So what I did here is just, I just made a little brown color here with a touch of red and yellow, a bit of uh, black and white, and um, it works really well. I put in one coat on, sand it, eight by 10, eight by 10, so it works really well. And I thought, well, you know, I get a lot of requests for real quick peony. So here's a peony. Now, I have some other ones that I'm gonna be doing with you guys. These are all things that I'm gonna be filming in the next, uh, well, within the next two days here in the studio. We're, gonna, we're setting up to do a whole week of filming here. So I'll be doing a lot of lessons. And I want to not only do the brush ups, but I want to take you guys through some other things. We're going to do that. I've got a lot of requests for my westerns and stuff again. So we'll do a horse. We got some coral peonies up there. These are some tree peonies. Got this wonderful uh, landscape there that we're going to do. And back into my wildlife, I get a lot of requests for go back into my wildlife. This is an elk that I did. Um, at, late one night as a quick little study, give myself 30 minutes to paint it so I can teach it in about an hour. And I thought, well, we'll paint something like this because I love the color, the tonal usage in an elk like this. Um, they just, uh, you know, it's good tonal practice and stuff. And that's the most important thing. But let's paint a painting and let's try to get it done here and practice it all up so Lori can do it during her uh, during our lunch break. Okay, so uh, we're going to come in here and grab just some of these colors. I'll set it slightly off camera here. And let's just paint something here. So I'm going to use my Fusion short handle brushes. I'll use a little bit of color. Now the other thing I have, this is my standard YouTube palette that you see me use all the time here. Um, the three yellows, Hansi Yellow, Dario Light Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna. The one red that I, I don't have out there is my Naphthol uh, red light and boy I am like almost out of it here <laughs> so we'll have to see if I can get a little bit out of the out of the tube so we can paint that here Whew, made it okay so we got some of that there naphthol red light burnt sienna pine green phthalo blue uh, quinacridone uh, violet and I have my red violet also well, I'm going to have to get myself some new colors. My red violet is almost out here too, so I forgot some of that red violet out here, so we'll put a little bit of that out there. Okay, so we can do an acrylic. 
you can add some mediums in there. This is my uh, extender medium that I use that you see me use a lot. This is I showed you in the last uh, the seascape that we did when we talked about thin and thick colors. What I'm doing is taking the extender medium and then I'm adding the brand new medium that we're carrying uh, from Derivan, and this is a thickener, an acrylic thickener. It takes just a little bit, and I showed you guys this in some of the other videos. You just put a little bit of that into that and mix it up really well and it'll it will make it really thick and gel like so it's an extender and it's thicker and I do a lot of thin thick painting I'm going to do it today and we'll talk to you about that and so sometimes the extenders I like them really thin which you'll see me start sometimes I like them thick so now I use a, a thickening agent in it it's brand new and uh, I've been painting with it for about a year but they just released it and it's fantastic and I'll show you let's get into it so I want to paint this peony a little bit of color. You know how into backgrounds and stuff I like to splash some colors around to give some interest and everything to them. And uh, so I'm just going to take, you could use water, an extender, I have a three quarter inch brush, the peony. So when I look at the peony, I look at the colors, there's some beautiful yellows in there, some red, red violets in there. And so I usually look to compliments or something like that that will, um, you know, cause the cause the peony to stand out. So, like a violet or something. I might just take like a a beautiful light violet. Sometimes I'll leave it really intense and cause this peony to really stand out. If I want this to tone down uh, a bit, any of your yellows or yellow greens, you could take a a bit of green right into here and see how that grays that down right there really pretty so that might be something right around in here might be kind of pretty to uh, work some of this color into the background and I'll use a, a little water or a little extender it doesn't have to stay wet but I'm just gonna push this around and you know it's their quick paintings and you know these kinds of things just they're fantastic for gifts and for you know if you're those of you that uh, do art fairs and stuff they're wonderful oh, a little bit of yellow got on my paper towel all those happy little accidents there that works out really nice that boy that violet's kind of pretty here um let's we'll add a little extender that'll stay nice on there for a while so we'll just push a little bit of that around now let's just set that brush down let's go when i start when i start a bigger i'm um, start a bigger painting like this i almost said that when i start a bigger flower like this on a small painting i like to go as large a brush as i can possibly do and uh, so here's an is a number eight and it's a good one you can tell it's got all the paint and stuff on it here let's go grab some of the colors that we're going to see into the center of the painting which are going to be these red red violets and yellows here and I'm going to start out thin so I'm going to add some extender in here I'm going to add a little white and maybe model in a little bit of the yellow orange which is the Darulite we'll come right into here and we're just going to push that color around here right in where that center would be maybe the bowl we'll keep the peony a little bit smaller here maybe we might do a a little one a little bud or something of one right out over here okay quick little practice here so I'm painting into uh, even into this wet violet and you just get this nice movement when you're painting like this what we're painting for because we as we're going to do this brush I'm going to tell you about tones half tones okay show you all different kinds of techniques to, to get this some of this so much stuff comes at you that it's easy to forget and it's nice to do little paintings like this to brush up to, to keep these things um, in your mind. So I have um, that color in there and what I'm looking for is just movement or I'll take this and I'll push it maybe out into the outside edge, softening out some of the movement, leaving some of the color there into the center that I want to be able to control. And I, I paint for movement more than anything else. And movement is, I want this, you see the center of the peony is just gonna kinda round around in there, see? And since I wanna start coming in here and drawing a little bit, now I'm gonna thicken my paint just a bit. So here where it's really quite thin, now I'm gonna thicken it up and this will allow me to get some of that rounding movement now, just rounding up and around here and I can push a bit when you when an artist wants to draw with paint they use the paint a little thicker 
And I'm a thin, thick painter. I'm a warm, cool painter. So I'm going to push some of that around. You see a little bit of pink and stuff down here by the outside edge of the bowl, so I'll push some of that. And I'll push around, and usually, just like I do with the rose, I sometimes use my fingers like this. You don't have to worry. The heritage paint is completely non-toxic. There's nothing in it that hurts you. Okay. Let's push in some. There's some heavier-duty color, like right over there. Let's go grab some thicker quinacridone, maybe a touch of that red violet that's even more contrast than what that peony photo shows. We'll push some of that in. And see the thicker paint allows me to draw and it stands proud of the surface here. Don't work it too much. If you work it too much it'll all just flatten out. So we start to, when we're starting to paint like this, we use very controlled just small little marks of thick paint. Okay? And as I, if I want to extend it, then I can use this, the extended, the extender that has been thickened up. And this will, this takes a long time to dry, several hours to dry if I start putting that in. I'll show you some more of that in just a second. Okay, so let's come in and let's add a little bit more yellow moving in there. So we'll get, and see as I'm putting in the thicker paint, so now my Darulite is a little thicker. Darulite, maybe a little yellow oxide right down through here. Okay, now that's really, really thick, so I'm going to wipe my brush and just move it through. This is what I like. As I start to build this, I start to see this type of movement. Don't touch it too much. Don't touch it too much or you'll lose the movement. Leave some of that movement there. That's just going to add tons of interest to your to your flower here if we can just leave some of that around okay and I'll work that now I'm also going to start lightening this up let's add some of this extender thickened extender to it so you see it stays thick this is what I want so here's my original consistency very thin so see if I come in here and if I lay this on it lays on really thick it doesn't bleed out it doesn't water you know doesn't go anywhere it lays out real thick so I can use this to start pushing some of the extra movement within the flower. Now, so you can see it stands proud of the surface here. And so I can wipe my brush like this and just lightly go over it and start to move it into the direction that I want this color in this peony to go up and down towards the bowl. I can move some around this way. I can emulate some of the petals pulling just right up there like that and start to pull them down lightly, lightly, lightly. This is just barely in my hand here. Lightly pulling that down. So this thicker paint, see that thicker paint stays there and models in and doesn't mix up and that's what I'm looking for. Let's take some of this thicker paint here. Let's make it a little bit pink here. Let's add some of the, the pink colors right up here by the top in here. Some of the light pinks that we see. So in this front of this one here, you'll see some light pinks that'll start to come in. We'll wanna hit some of those. We'll hit a few little marks of some of the petals out here. You can even go more light and a little bit of that nice thick stuff to it. Use just a corner of the brush and tap in to add some of those little tiny movements that you can get in this one. You can restate shadows, and I'll do this sometimes. I'll just come back in and restate a bit of the shadow movement here that I'll see. And see, I like this. That's the color movement that I take. See, it's real thick, and I'm just lightly hitting it and moving this around. It, this type of painting with this takes practice. This is why it's good brush ups like this, working these colors like this to learn how to paint thin thick. It's not an easy technique to do thin thick like this because you've got to learn how to touch your brush really light and but that's the key to a lot of things we do you know is that that touching that brush. Now let's take some of this we'll thin this out. Let's even grab a little bit of our background that violet which will gray this down and let's come back out here and you can see it's nice and soft Let's put in some of the softer back pigments here and back color. So if I add a little bit of this other color, I can thin it out here 
I can thin it out so it doesn't have quite so much power. I can push these together there and blur those in here. So I get some of those nice movements there. Here, I can uh, pull some of this around. I like the petals to go all kinds of ways here. So it's not as thick as the center as I was just doing it. I'm a little bit thinner, but I, I want that to, so if I push into here, the white will die really quickly because it's not as thick as the other colors there. So a little bit of the, that, just a softer little color. Let's come out here and we'll kind of draw some in. As I hit this area of thicker paint, this light color will draw, die, see, and that yellow wins. And so it, you, you just work those in really easy. They come in really easy. So the outsides of the peony here, I kind of want to blur, I want to put them in with thinner paint so that they they don't uh, have very much power in the painting. Let's get just a little more violets here, a little bit of those yellows, a little bit of white here. Vary those tones up, push those around, get some of that nice movement up there into that peony. Okay. All the peonies are fun and I get a lot of, I get so many requests for peonies and for years I didn't uh, show them. And, and part of the reason is because they can get really frustrating trying to build these colors. But with some of these new techniques, guys, they're, it, it takes practice, okay? Everything takes practice. There's nothing that I show on my channel anywhere that is just like, boom, I can sit down and do this. Because my job, I've been a teacher for 35 years. My job is to teach. And if you can do it immediately, I haven't taught you anything, okay? So it takes practice. And hopefully it takes practice. But you'll get it if you practice. You can get it. Okay, let's put some... So I got this nice softness that's all the way around here. Let's put a softer pink right up and through here. A couple of softer little kind of light and pink petals there. I can push that pink, a little more pink in there. See, just by taking a little thicker pink and pushing that in there and making that, that pink. That petal's just a bit big, so I can just push into it and push it around. I can push the paint around really easy because it's nice and thick. That's what I like. Now, let's come over here. We'll model in with some of our white, some of our thicker paint gel here, the, the extender. I call it extender gel. Now, just thick paint here. And um, well, let me just show you this. So you can, if you want to get in here and start doing individual petals, you got this movement in here, individual petals, small down your brush. You know, go get grab a smaller brush, a smaller little flat, or, you know, if you look at the shape of like these, this is like a smaller little filbert. So I'll come in here with that small little, this is a number um, four filbert. You have a number two and a number four. So you can go smaller yet. And with the thick paint, see, you can lay up right up on top of this and you can start drawing. And what I do is I load up like this this is that petal edge technique that I've showed you guys before and other things. I'll load up and I'll push here a little bit to deposit that paint. But I can start drawing around with it. Maybe I want to draw this lighter little edge here on this part of a petal. So I got the movement there. Now I can come in with that, with some of this and draw some more unique petals inside the peony here and get some different kinds of movements here to the... Uh, to what this, you know, that I want to have inside this little peony here, like this, little bits of movement. So the small little brush can allow you to, to do smaller little things, little edges like this. See, I can come out here, I can turn this, let me touch that a couple times here just to soften it. Turn the nice soft little yellow petal right out there. We'll grab just, I love this, this gel like this. You can do it without the gel, but you know, sometimes it uh, the gel really helps the paint kind of slide around, which is nice. Let's just put a little mark or so right in there. Little little bits of the turning peony there on the inside. A um, bit more into the front here. Let's build up a little bit more. See, I like that those colors there. And so I'll take this thick paint and just lay it out on top here. 
So it sits down on top. Now, if I want to bring some of that yellow back, I wipe my brush like this and I can lift off some of this other color or, re or start to manipulate the movement of some of those colors there. See, so I get this movement, you know, like coming out that way there. There, I can take, I can go back and grab some of those, those pinks and stuff and reestablish the little pink bowl that's right there if I want to put that in. Maybe then come in with the edge of this and then just draw some of the petals like this, just quick little petals like this, in to uh, give the idea of petals coming across the front here. Okay, little ones here like this push those in sometimes i push with my finger sometimes i use the brush i like to do all different kinds of things we'll just kind of draw one around but the small brush gives you a lot of stroking brush movement it's not as soft so if i want to put a pedal like right up into the front of here and i want it soft i'd use the big brush because the big brush see puts in a bigger softer look to the pedal there, like that. And then I could also lift off the shadow this way, see? Yeah, I love it. I like to, myself, I like to paint with as large a brush as possible. But the small brush allows you to do a lot of drawing. And I like the big brush because I can use little corners of it. So I use just a tiny little corner. And I can build a bigger petal, but yet I can also do tiny little marks and stuff with it just by using that little um, corner. So, you know, with that little corner, you start to capture some of the, the feeling there of those and the, of those petals. Let's put a bit of the violets into this, so a little softer over to this side here, just a little soft color. Maybe uh, I'll control this a little thicker white here right up over here and put just an edge of it right here, a little movement edge of it right there. You build it and you see you build it. So I start in the center, I go to the outside, I come in and I start building in through here with the, the look that I wanna have. Maybe um, a couple more little angled ones right in here that will kind of pull in. You control that on, it's your peony, you control it. Now that, the sample one there has a lot of little movement in like this, which is fine, but I do like to have a bit of a bigger one right up front. I like that. Maybe a more of a pink one right in here, a little softer pink one right there. So you just get some of those colors there. And um, maybe a softer one right out here that kind of cups that one here you're in them but you get lots of this movement see and I can soften some of this out if I want to soften that look of that one just a bit sometimes I leave that I, I like that edge and it's that edge that petal edge so I can maybe draw one right in here so you just lean over on that edge and draw it that petal edging technique is fantastic to draw stuff guys it, it really is it just kind of shapens up you know and stuff I can come back and you know even add in a smaller little one right in here just right on top of that one and now I have another little petal so you can build it and build it as much as you want here as I do a lot of drawing though I like my paint to be thicker so it stands out on top so I'll thicken up just a bit maybe just a bit of the thicker movement here right here just a touch or so of that thicker movement right there and that's kind of a pretty little one and you can bring in some color here so it's the the working and watching the thin and thick now I might you can come back and push colors in let me just show you I might just come back and rework the center again just with a little thicker dotted light here maybe a little bit of that quinacridone I didn't add too much of that red We'll push that around, and if I go thicker here, see, I can I can reshape. Don't ever think, oh, God, I can't go back in there. Yeah, you can. Look at the interest. I can drive back into that peony there, and I'll go a little thicker so it has some power here and drive some of this cooler color in there, okay? I'm never afraid because this is just all movement. 
Now, I won't go quite as thick, just a little bit. And because uh, I want it, if I want this white to be a little softer, I won't go quite as thick. Here's a little bit thicker right here. If I want to draw a petal, I always go a little thicker. Okay. If I want it softer, I can even, th I can tap it and thin it out so I can just paint some softer movement there. See? So, and you can uh, redirect and touch other little bits and little sparks and stuff like that of the peony here into the center and get some of that pretty little movement there. It's up to you and it's, uh, you know, you can copy the peony a little closer. I, I don't like to, but you can because, you know, I, I did for years as I, now I just kind of like to do my thing here. I'm going to put a little edge right in here to set that one up. And that's kind of a pretty little uh, peony there. And we'll come back over here towards this uh, this other one. I'm going to go thin it out just to thin out my colors a bit. So I want it to be a little softer. Here I'll put a little thin color on here. Maybe a bit of the violets and stuff in there as well. Here, boom. Let's put just a bit of that yellow in there. Okay. And uh, I'll come back here. Not super thick. And we'll just do a, pea, a a bud and just pull through. Don't pull through too many times because what happens is you'll lose the modeling of the color and it'll start to blend. So I want to leave some of that modeling there of the color. Now, I may want an edge up here, so I'm going to petal it. So I'll go back to my thicker color here so it draws. And I'll put a petal like this one. It's just beginning to open up. Maybe a mark or two out like this here a little softer color and uh, just a bit of the the reds and stuff in here just I paint when I paint the buds and blossoms and stuff or I paint for movement more than anything else now let's go a little thicker here a little bit of the the medium and we'll hit the front of this with just a couple of bits of color here so that uh, it stands out on there okay maybe an edge so this one is just opening up here boom like this and you can lift off you can hit some of this softer color just I like the movement I look for the movement of the of the colors here it, that's going to set the shapes and stuff of that now let's just go in and um We'll take a bit of burnt sienna, some green, some fun things here. Let's just, uh, you know, add some of our uh, stems with our brush here, like this. How oh, I like to do that. Maybe a bit of, I love the, the, the uh, yellows. Now I'm going to go a little thinner, so I'm going to thin this out with the extender. And a thinner so that the leaves don't have a tremendous amount of power. We can come back out here and push some of this other color out here like this so it stays a, a bit, uh, uh, you know, softer, so thinner, so it's softer. But we can just push some color. It's beautiful. You can do a little negative painting up around the peony here with some of these colors and, uh, you know, just pull them around and, and paint up against the edge of the petal like that and grab some of this nice movement. You could shape some of the, uh, you know, some of the petals up a bit more, you know, and, and uh, to uh, make our shape some of the leaves up a little bit more, I meant to say. And uh, maybe give them like a little stem and some color movement and stuff like that if you want to have some additional stuff. Now, I, I'm liking a lot about this peony. I, I want to develop the bowl color a little bit more, even though this the sample doesn't have it. There are things I like to do. <laughs> and, you know, I, it's like I always say, you know, photographs are examples. I, I used to always copy them so close, and now it's just like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm going to do my thing. And... People like it when you do your thing because you paint more casual, paint more natural when you do that. So I'm just going to put a bit of this out here. And uh, 
we might even take some of this violet, some of this other violet with our background in it, thin it so it doesn't have, let's grab some extender, thin it so it doesn't have power and just push some of this color around back out here like that. That just adds so much. A little bit of light. Just push some of those colors around. Get some of those movements. See, that's just, it's just all done with color and that's what makes it pretty. But I want that, I love a lot of things about this painting, but I, I want to get a little bit more shadow down in there, which is going to give me a little more contrast. Now, the original doesn't have that. It has some nice dark, if I turn it down there, there's a little bit of dark. We're going to expand it, okay? So I'm just going to come back in here and reset some dark right down in there and push. Now, my, that dark is a little thinner, so it won't win, you see? The whites and stuff that I put in there were thicker, so they will win. Thin, thick, it's so important. Let's just drag a bit of that darker now, a little bit thicker, right in there. We'll drag a bit of that and see if we start to like some of that movement that's uh, coming there. Maybe a bit of the yellow, a little bit of our medium here. A little bit of that yellow. See, I like that color in there. And try not to take that, um, try not to take too much of that out. Now, let's go back to a thicker, lighter, maybe a bit of the pink, and just set some of that back in here. See, so you can come back, set some more shadows, set some more movements and stuff real easy. So see, I give a, a little bit more contrast, a little bit now going, a little bit more going on in that peony, and, and you can do the larger petals out there which is kind of fun, but it's the movement. That's what you paint for more than anything else. Let's put a bit of that pink movement right back here. That'll be kind of pretty. And maybe just a touch, using that corner of the brush, a little thicker white, just a corner. Just a touch of that movement back there like that. So, you know, each one of these little touches is like a little petal there, which the peony, you know, builds petals in all different kinds of ways here just like that and that's kind of pretty that gives a, a nice little look to it and we can just open some of this up a bit you can streak some colors you know we used uh, this is some of the stuff that I do so I like that darulite in there I take that darulite maybe some of this green let's thin it out here darulite yellow and this is what I like to do. I'll, I'll add that yellow streak right up. And sometimes, sometimes what I'll do, if I'm, uh, you know, really contemporary, is I'll pull it like this right into the edge of that peony. And some of you right now are probably holding your breath. You're saying, "Why did you just screw that up?" Because it's mine. <laughs> you know, be, with brush ups, what are we going to do? We're going to try all different kinds of things and not paint what we know, paint things that do different. But see, I'll drag that through. Now, what does that do? That takes and that blurs that edge of that peony. It takes that color right in that peony. Sometimes I'll pull it right through to the other side so you see that coming through. Now, I'll take some of the thicker medium so it has power with the white thicker white and I'll just use that corner and I'll draw this right back up on top put that petal right back up on top now it's got the yellow going right through it see and how much white I use on that corner determines how much of that yellow shows up through that through the edge of that peony there so now that yellow see is pulling through and going through to the it up there let's take some of this softer stuff up here and what is this up here we don't know it's just movement, color and movement. Here, soft, push it. Push some soft movement back there. Maybe it's trying to be a peony. Let's put a little bit of the gel. The nice thing about the gel is you could use a lot of it with just a tiny bit of paint and start to get some transparency as well. See? So I can make like a little transparent edge there and stuff like that. But that will give you some ideas. There's some things to... Uh, practice a bit some of those movements and stuff and getting some of those uh, colors and stuff and painting that around is just a whole heck of a lot of fun you know you can break this with some uh, 
light pinks and stuff if you think it's too much yellow or so but it's it just adds it just adds fun to the uh, to the painting some light violets you know coming back down you can do the same thing with any of your your colors pulling down here like this and softening the effect here i can take some of this real soft color and build like there's another one right back up here as well starting up and just soften right into some of that yellow push that in see and it's fun practice practice the thin thick now see this white is drawn because i added a little bit of the gel to it i kept it real thick so it draws see so i got this this kind of drawing edge to it but i but i can blur it off if i want to keep it softer just a bit of that in there see and you can wipe through it's going to stay wet for a long time you can wipe through or take some of that down a bit and you get yourself a, a you know a nice look and i gotta told myself i'm gonna get this one so i got a frame for it you know this would go real well in a real dark frame or um you know take this so they're really nice those of you that do your own framing that using the smaller ones like this allows you to get those nice end cuts and finish those up or you know just go to your local home store or your craft store or something and you can get eight by ten picture frames really reasonable and so then you got that and look at the the beautiful movement that's moving around the, of color movement that's moving around in that painting no it's not exactly like this but we got all the beautiful movement of the colors and stuff, and that's what we were looking for. Could have a little more dark into the center, but I like it, won't they? And there are quick little paintings there. So, you know, with this one, we'll practice some of that thin thick. We'll practice some of that um, movement using that petal edging kind of technique and drawing some of that stuff around. Great little practice one for you to, to do real quickly, and it makes a great gift. So I'm going to be just you know so pleased with something like that you know sign it and give something like that it's a beautiful you know give the gift of art it's it's wonderful we're going to continue on with all different kinds of, i really want to paint those coral paintings up there those of you that were in the live class last week in the membership you saw me uh, show you how i would attack coral paintings like that and uh, we'll paint up some of those we'll get some of those done and some of the wildlife and animals and uh you know, Maverick, uh, Chuck, I haven't forgot, you know, the, doing the wildlife stuff on it. You know, we're going to get back into some of that as well. We're going to do an elk. We've got a set of geese. We've got a, a wood duck. And we've got all kinds, all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to increase the amount of filming that we're doing here uh, over the next course of the next couple of months as we head into winter. And um, we're in the gift-giving season. We're going to give you all kinds of ideas to paint some of these stuff up, okay? Alrighty? Okay, I'll see you guys on the next one on this landscape. I can't wait to do that landscape. That one's going to be pretty. And I want to do some big ones with you guys, but I also got... I could talk like this all day. But uh, I want to also do some uh, small little ones with you. Some of the small landscapes, you know, that a lot of plain air artists go out and paint. We want to do that. I want to show you how to do that. And we'll do that in brush-ups. Show you some, maybe practice that atmospheric perspective, linear perspective in some uh, a real quick brush-up lesson, okay? Alrighty, guys. I'll see you in just a day or two. We'll put up another one, okay? Alright, see you then.